Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the last game of Clutch Chess International 2020 Grand Final. 12 games in the match between current world champion Magnus Carlsen and his opponent Fabiano Caruana, a pretender to the world champion title in 2018, number two in the world. So uh, this gonna be the duel between two giants, chess giants, the best uh, players on the planet uh, and I would like to show you the standings what happened in the first 11 games I actually analyzed the game number one and the game number three in my opinion the most interesting games of this match final match so uh, so check it if you haven't seen them yet the the link is in top right corner so you can click check after this game or, or before up to you and after day one we had the six games and the score was 4-4 so very very even then we had the game number seven when Magnus Carlsen won we had the draw and then Caruana managed to win and then Carlsen win again Again, a lot of emotions and then in the clutch game Magnus Carlsen lost and Fabiano Caruana got three points so uh, before the game number 12 we have six and a half points for Magnus Carlsen and eight and a half for Fabiano Caruana so it's clear that Magnus Carlsen playing as white has to win has to win the game now the questions what opening uh, he gonna choose to get any advantage any chances this is very very interesting so without further ado let's jump into the board Magnus Carlsen open with c4 the same opening like in the game number one uh, we have e5 knight on c3 knight on f6 g3 so still the same bishop on b4 and e4 again still the same bishop takes on c3 b takes on c3 and now castle of course knight cannot take on e4 because queen g4 uh, attacking the knight attacking g7 very unpleasant and i explain all of that in the game number one uh, we have castle by fabiano caruana and f3 so again the same the same almost the bank load opening a uh, king on f2 is coming uh, and in the last game uh, fabiano caruana goes for the strongest c6 and followed by d5 he this was his idea but now he deviates and so definitely this is the home preparation and plays b4 and fabiano caruana plays uh, very often some uh, preparation home preparations uh, which are not the top recommended the moves uh, but very difficult to to actually refute but this time uh, b5 it's very very suspicious and Magnus Carlsen of course knows that moving the C pawn from the center is never good idea so for example in Evans Gambit you you give up the center uh, and uh, and uh, there is a very very sharp sharp game but here after he plays f3 he want to play d4 so he wants to have very very strong uh, center if he takes this pawn the problem is d5 and yes he can play d4 but after let's say knight b on d7 bishop on g2 just develop a bit and after exchanging the the pawns let's say this way and magnus carlsen still have this center however this bishop of course belongs to this diagonal look at this is attacking the pawn uh, the rook is coming of course on the on the e file it doesn't look good for white white didn't castle yet uh, okay so uh, definitely Magnus Carlsen is not interested in that pawn uh, and plays immediately d4 we have e takes on d4 c takes on d4 and now b takes on c4 uh, and here Magnus of course can take on the on the c4 but first intermezzo move e5 kicking the knight knight on d5 bishop on c4 comes with tempo uh, and now bishop on b7 and this bishop uh, is on this diagonal uh, as I said definitely definitely part of the plan this is why Fabiano Caruana plays b5 knight on h3 by Magnus Carlsen and now d6 undermining the center as the king is still in the center and Magnus Carlsen uh, doesn't want to wait what's gonna happen and this time not king on f2 but castle Magnus Carlsen simply castle and now black could go for for example d takes on e5 and after d takes on e5 let's say knight on b6 attacking the bishop exchanging the queens uh, bishop b3 
but why it still stands very very good this majority of pawns four pawns against three on the on the king position uh, and pair of bishop it's a really comfortable position to play so we have knight on d7 fabiano caruana doesn't want to exchange the queens we have rook on e1 and now d takes on e5 d takes on e5 now moving the knight to the to b6 from the seven rank attacking the bishop bishop retreats and now Fabiano Caruana has to decide what to do. It's not easy to find the plan. For example, how, how to continue, what to do. Uh, we have queen on e7 with the idea of, of moving the queen to c5, which can be very unpleasant together with the, with the bishop. Uh, it can create some, you know, some attack possibilities. So uh, Magnus Carlsen play Magnus Carlsen move. And uh, I would just to ask you to pause the video uh, and try to find what would you play in this situation. Uh, you have undeveloped the rook, one of the rook, the bishop, the queen. Uh, uh, the king is in quite a uh, shaky position it can be attacked with the with the queen uh, maybe there are gonna be some some attacks also on this diagonal maybe with the with the knight jumping somewhere on e3 uh, if this bishop is moved of course uh, what would you play what would you play in this position try to find it while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? As I said, that was a very good hint because Magnus Carlsen plays Magnus move and he play E6. What an idea. Uh, first, the best move in the position for Caruana is F6. And this is the only move uh, where he can, you know, continue to fight F6. And uh, what white can play? Something like a4, maybe with the idea of, of bishop on a3, maybe with the idea of pushing the pawn. So the best move would be a5, blocking the pawn, and also after bishop on a3, the knight can jump on b4. Okay? Uh, and for example, white can exchange the one of the bishops and play a5, harassing this knight. But after knight on c4, uh, black have quite nice position to play uh, and this knight is actually not really touchable I, I mean it could be played by but it's very very complicated position so for example if if the knight is taken then queen on c5 winning back the material king on g2 and you see already this king is on the diagonal with the bishop so queen on c4 uh, and then the position is very sharp e7 is coming uh, let's say knight on f4 uh, a lot of things uh, going on definitely queen can for example join to d7 the knight maybe can can join somewhere uh, and it's quite complicated position so so definitely was one of the options uh, and also white could play just something something more calm more solid like knight on f Two. and then after a5 now attacking the bishop maybe a3 making some space rook a on d8 and there are a lot of some some nasty discoveries here uh let's say bishop on d2 uh, attacking this pawn now so a4 bishop a2 uh, and then and then black would have knight on c3 very tricky move and actually what what the engine recommends here is taking the knight this is the best move recommended by the engine okay so after rook on d1 rook a on d1 and white stands better even without the queen with this bishop pointing on the on the king's position pair of rooks uh there are a couple of plans bishop can come also to b4 i can exchange the the knight then the rook could jump to d7 there are of course couple of plans so f6 was playable however fabiano caruana goes for f takes on e6 uh, and this is actually losing move because now magnus play knight on g5 uh, and what to play next the problem is the pawn is under attack okay you have to defend if you play bishop on c8 it's of course possible but after queen on c2 
uh, with the idea of, of mating, uh, you have to play something like g6 and then h4, h5 is coming. You cannot even block it because queen is watching on, on g6. So uh, not, not the greatest idea. So Fabiano Caruana tries to defend with the rook on f6, okay? Defending the pawn on e6. Uh, and now we have queen on c2. So checkmate is coming anyway. Uh, and what to do now? g6 now, this time gonna be met with the bishop on b2 attacking this rook, okay? And you don't have much choice. Uh, you have to move the rook or gonna lose the exchange uh, or you're gonna lose this pawn. And losing this pawn, uh, it's really bad idea because look at these bishops. These bishops are, you know, bishops from hell. So Fabiano tries something else and he plays rook on g6, blocking the queen. Uh, and what would you play now in this position? What would you play now? h4 is definitely good move however it's gonna be followed by by the move which we are looking for so uh, instead of h4 you can immediately play the move we are looking for rook on e6 this is another magnus carlsen move what just happened magnus carlsen gives this rook gives the minor piece what's going on the point is if we have rook on e6 uh, then queen h7 delivers the checkmate, okay? Here is the idea. Uh, and if you move the queen, the most active, if you play something like queen on d8 is very passive. If you try something uh, slightly active, uh, which doesn't really matter, but it's, uh, it's some chance, something like queen on b4 with the idea maybe maybe making some fork uh, then still the same move wherever the the queen is here or here uh, rook on g6 and now the difference is that the queen can jump actually to d4 deliver the check and after king on g2 black have to decide take this rook or maybe takes this rook uh, and taking this rook doesn't really matter because bishop on b2 actually uh, gonna trap the queen and look at this attack that would be just disaster so h takes on g6 but then bishop b2 uh, and still attacking on this diagonal so queen on b4 and now finally queen g6 checkmate is coming how you gonna defend if you try to defend like queen on e7 yes you're defending but now queen on h7 and you're gonna get checkmated so uh this is very very tricky C fabiano caruana tries to exchange the queen uh for the rook and the knight so we have a queen on e6 knight on e6 rook on e6 and now bishop on b2 so all the plan is the same these pieces you know some of the pieces are gonna be exchanged some not but the position is is the same very very similar Rook A on E8 by Fabiano Caruana, double the rooks on the E file, trying to counter something, uh, but it just doesn't work. Magnus Carlsen knows about that, that he has time and he just play bishop on D4. We have king on H8, so moving the king uh, far from this uh, pin. And now queen on F5, so bringing the queen to the to the king to the final blow, to the final attack. We have bishop on C8, now harassing the queen. Uh, now we have the, some nasty discovery on the board, so Magnus has to do something. But of course this queen was just on the way, uh, you know, to move to the king side. So Magnus just continue his journey, queen on H5, and now the queen cannot be harassed anymore. Uh, for example, rook on h6, it looks very tempting. However, this is a checkmate, so it's not even possible. So uh, first c5, okay, deflecting the bishop uh, and after bishop on c5, rook e5. Okay, so bishop was deflected. There is the square for the rook, making also the, the space uh, for the h3, and Magnus just goes to f7. There are still no squares to harass the queen, and uh, so so you just cannot do, do anything. The bishop now controls e7, for example. You also cannot play this move because, because you're gonna get checkmated, so you know that already. Uh, so Fabiano Caruana tries bishop on h3, but as I said, 
king still have the space to escape uh, we have bishop on f8 now look another move bishop on f8 and now queen gonna checkmate the king what to play now uh, caruana tries to do some you know per perpetual check uh, and deliver a couple of checks we have rook on e1 rook on e1 rook e1 with check and now calmly king on f2 we have rook on f1 with check king e2 and now knight c3 with check uh, magnus goes king on d3 and in this position fabiano caruana resign he resigned he cannot deliver any more checks he cannot also defend g7 uh, so he just gonna be checkmated here all he can do is takes on f3 uh, and of course the the rook gonna fall and the checkmate is coming uh, you know sooner or later so in this position fabiano caruana resign so magnus carlsen won and he has nine and a half points to eight and a half points by Fabiano Caruana. What a match, what a match, pretty amazing stuff. And now just last picture, this is the winner of Clutches International. Uh, congratulations to Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so we finished this tournament. I managed to, to analyze 11 games. Uh, I make the analysis with the commentary. So uh, feel free to watch them all if you are interested a lot. I choose only, you know, really great Great games the best games of the tournaments in my opinion and if you don't want to miss any other quality content on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one